go ahead and get started tonight. Again, I'm glad to be back here this evening, and uh, we've had a good journey to uh, Noblesville, Indiana this weekend. We've been up there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, had a good time with the youth group. Uh, again, a little bit different than normal services here, but uh, again, we had a good time with the Lord, and uh, Josh, it's been a blessing to have you to support us while we were gone, and I know you did a good job this morning, I'm sure, and I'm sure you will tonight also. It's good to see your parents here tonight, too, so give them a hand here this evening. Thank them for being here, and uh, I want to let you all know that uh, a lady by the name of Martha Stoner passed away this weekend. Uh, yesterday, actually, and that was Mary Shepherd's sister. So some of you get her text and see that. But again, that's her sister. We're going to be having her funeral services Friday and Saturday up here at Grayson. So if some of you know that family, and again, that would be the Young family, of course. But uh, that'll be uh, from four to eight Saturday or Friday, and then at eleven Saturday we'll have the funeral service for that family. So. If you want to pay respects, fine. If you just want to pray for them, that's even finer. So, also Bob Goforth is back in the hospital again. He's had some trouble with a finger. Again, the way the blood's not flowing through it and stuff, and also with the dialysis. Got to keep him in prayer. And then Judy Hall, uh, still dealing with fluid on her body, so we need to keep these in prayer. There's a host of others. Uh, prayer requests get longer and longer all the time. If you see that I keep putting a lot of people under the same, a lot, or the same people need prayer. It's not I'm just trying to wear your, <laughs> your phone out putting those texts on there, but people, a lot of the same ones. A lot of people have been dealing with COVID. I know we've had uh, four or five this week, I think, that have been dealing with COVID, whether it's the same strand, whatever. I don't know nothing about strands, so people say that. But anyway, a lot of people need their prayers and needing to move with the Holy Spirit. Uh, before we start here tonight, let's have a word of prayer. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be back here tonight. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for those that have, uh, Father, stepped up and done things that they needed to today. We appreciate each and every one of them, Lord. We thank you for Josh that's preached the gospel for us this morning, and I know he will again this evening. And I just thank you for this young man, and uh, Lord, for his... <laughs> Just a, a fine heart for you. <clears throat> and I just pray you'll continue to use him. Use him for your kingdom greatly. And again, touch each and every one of our hearts tonight. Uh, pray God that your blessings be upon this evening. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. amen and amen. Amen. We're turning it over here to Brother Dave. You know? All right. I don't know if it's good or not, but I'm doing it. <laughs> 513, everybody want to stand and sing with us? You're welcome to do that. Standing on the promises in F. Mm -hmm. It's a long way down that floor. It's a long way further up. back up. Yeah. This F. Standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages let His praises ring. Thank you. 
appreciate her being over there and helping. <coughs> Excuse me, this morning and this evening. 546, it looks like it says A flat. Is A flat okay with you? Or would you rather do A or G or do you care? I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them what it will be. 546. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on find it here. 954 in the key of C or G. I, I don't. I think C maybe. This is a, I thought of this song because of what the brother said this morning. But getting back to what we know. Getting to back to what we once knew. Getting back to what we did. Getting back Catch that getting back part? Let's get back to when we were children. We trusted. We trusted what the adults <coughs> told us. We trusted what the teachers told us. Back then, we trusted what we were told, and we didn't doubt. And when someone told us about the Lord, whatever they told us, we believed it. We took it at what it was said, and we trusted it. And nothing has changed except we've gotten older. So this child song, as it's referred to, is actually child of God. It's for us as the children of the Lord to remember that we know without any doubt because we learned it so long ago. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so.
Brother Bobby, saw my boy the other night. Everybody knows some call in heaven. One day, all of us is going to do my son's mother's getting ready to pass on. We're going to be with Jesus. She's battled this cancer now for a long time. And I'm hoping my son gets to get in before she goes. Because I talked to the other brother's uh, little lady. On the song in a prayer. I think she's holding on just to see Dusty one more time. And I feel brother David. I'm saying that's what it took for me to be able to get over my son. But when I talked to him, he was driving down the road with the pops and doing everything, can't hold it up. I said, son, depend on God. Brother David, that's all we got to depend on. Amen. I like what Brother Nathan was saying because that's what I thought about for a long time. He's not my pilot, co-pilot. He is my pilot. Because if I pilot it, this daggone plane is going to crash. But if my Jesus Christ above pilots it, Amen. Brother it's good, Brother Josh, it's going to make it home. If we get back to what we start believing again Amen. and start like God. That's right. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing impossible with my Jesus, Brother David. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. Amen. If he could raise the dead back then, the lame could walk, the blind could see. Amen. You know, the dead be raised. Let me tell you something. If we just grab a hold of that faith and what Brother Nathan preached about when he's now, hope. Hope is in Jesus Christ above, Brother Yes, Jesus. amen. That we know if we hope, I would rather believe in the cross and Jesus crucified than to just live out this world and walk through this world and split hell wide open. I would rather live for my Jesus. I'll take that chance. Brother Nathan, I'll take that chance tonight because I love my Jesus, Brother Amen. Thomas. I love my Jesus with all my heart. Yes. Y'all pray for me because it's my desire to get this word out to Charleston. Amen. To take Charlestown back from the devil. I watched little kids going out, running to and fro, sister, not knowing which way to go or which way to turn. And I said, my God, we need to take these children back to the devil. That's my heart's desire, Brother David, is to take our people back. That's right. The drug addicts, the alcoholics need to know there's something different from in the bottom of that bottle because when you get to the bottom, guess what? You hit empty, but guess what? When I get on fire for Jesus, he stays with me. I walk with him. I'm not always perfect because like Brother Nalen preached, nobody perfect. But I want to strive to be there because I want to hear those final words. Well done, that good and faithful. Enter in. Enter in. That's what I'm looking for, Brother Amen. David. That enter in to God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Yes. I just want to thank God every day for being with me, walking with me, and yes. guiding me, and, and giving me the, the wisdom I need when the time comes for whatever the, ever the problem or opportunity presents itself. I appreciate Him being with me and walking for me because I'm not doing yes. very good on these knees right now walking. Mm -hmm. But um, I go to the doctor again tomorrow to see what they want to do to me next. But I thank God for the strength and the courage He gives that I don't let it keep me whole. I don't say, well, that's it. I'm not going to church because my knee hurts. And I know that's his blessing me and drawing me and giving me the strength and the courage to get in here and not give Satan the chance to win in any degree. If he never heals these knees if they fall apart from here. I will always praise his name and thank him for his blessings, his mercy, and his love. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else tonight? Something the Lord did for us. <coughs> Yeah, I've been wearing these glasses here. Didn't tell nobody, but I've been wearing these glasses for the last three or four months. And the doctor, I can tell, he, I don't, he don't really know what's wrong with my left eye. I've lost some sight out and stuff. And 
but, but I went back to him this past week and, and uh, he wanted to see it again and he gave me that eye test and he said, well, you're getting better. He says, it, it's coming right along. It's slow, but it's coming. And I don't know if my eye doctor knows the Lord, but I tell you one thing, I said, I, you wouldn't be surprised how much I've been praying for this hour. Because I know the Lord can help me if he wants to get me back to sight. So yes. uh, I just got a chance to talk to my doctor. And I thank the Lord because like that song Dave says all the time, the God of the mountain, he's God. still God of the valley. And the right. God of the day is still God of the night. Amen. I listen to that song about every day. So Praise Amen. God. Anybody else tonight? We're going to get ready for prayer. And, uh, I, well, I want to remind you also of our Thanksgiving service for all the churches that uh, care to gather together. We're going to be meeting uh, next Sunday night. It'll be at the First Baptist here in uh, Charlestown. Shay Allen's the pastor there. And that'll be at 6 p.m. So come out and be a part of that. I know that's a few days after Thanksgiving, but isn't every day a day of Thanksgiving anyway? It don't it have is. to be the week before. It, should be every it day. ought to be, yes, all the time. So, uh, again, come out and participate in that. And, again, we're going to have three speakers. We're going to have communion and some good fellowship. So come out and be a part of that wherever you go to church at. I know some of you go to different places. But come out and be with us on that. If you're watching, listening another time and you see that, come out and be a part of that. And that will be next Sunday at 6 p.m. in the afternoon. So, But, anyway, I wanted to remind you of that. Uh, still lifting up in prayers. Uh, like I say, there's three or four people that's been telling. I know Steve Pastor, him and his wife both are dealing with COVID. Uh, there's some others. I'm not going to mention names. I don't know who cares and who don't care about that. But uh, again, we want to pray for all those that are dealing with colds and sicknesses. I know I've had that whatever congestion and stuff. And I thank God that I'm doing better. I'm not 100% better, but uh, I will be. Just give God a chance to take care of it. I know he's Amen. on the throne, so he'll take care of us. And we do want to continue to pray for Gail and Charlie Bays. It was in an accident. Uh, it's been a few weeks now. We also want to pray for Lee Seward. I did talk to him on the phone the other day, and uh, he's still doing well, but he's got some more things coming up, so we want to pray for him with his heart. Pam Seward still, not Pam Seward, Pam Wiggum is dealing with, uh, again, that leukemia. And uh, also for Mike Perry, uh, he had some things going here, here a while back. We want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Lakin, Donna McDonald's uh, granddaughter, uh, she had some wisdom teeth tucked out this past Friday. And Pat, you said she's having a little bit of trouble with that, so we want to pray for little Lakin. I know she had asked for prayer there last Sunday when she was here, so we want to keep her in prayer. Still praying for Gary Higdon, healing from his knee surgery. Also, Sandy Cundiff. Uh, with the breathing problems, I think she's in Tennessee right now, isn't she, Pat? Turn the way back. Okay, so, but we still want to keep her in prayer. Still praying for a man today in Travis Barrett that had some procedures that got postponed. Uh, Bonnie and Steve Shaw, and uh, again, as we mentioned, Bob, go forth for him and for Patty both. We want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, again, for David back here with his knee, for whatever he's got going on here before long. Hopefully soon anyway, for him and his wife with her heart. Uh, still praying for uh, Stella Henry that's got some eye surgery coming up. Sounds like we've got some eyes, eyes that need to be healed. Hers is the December the 4th. And still praying for Laverne Bodkin. She's got some knee surgery coming up in January. Still praying for Karen and Chris Grayson. I uh, asked for prayer for my wife, Sandra. She's not been feeling well, but she is doing better today. But she's always got that back and hip problem. Uh, praying for Wayne's wife, Janet, as well. Uh, again, we want to pray for the Leroy Gravy family that passed away also. We want to pray for them as well as the Stoner family, too. All the ones dealing with cancer, all the ones dealing with heart conditions, for all of our families, we want to lift them all up in prayer. So, yes. prayer requests for from you all up here tonight. I continue to pray for the Lord's <coughs> ministry. I'm still trying, like others have mentioned, to, to have the revival. It's <coughs> I'm starting to get it going. If God would bless his ministry wherever we are, whatever we do, where we go, that he'll stir it in this, stir it anywhere in this town, preferably, but I mean anywhere. I'll take it anywhere. <laughs> Amen. God's got it. We want it. <laughs> Amen. Others? Hey, yeah. Uh, I just asked y'all to please remember. Uh, 
Dusty, Dennis, the mother, that's my son. Uh, I know God's going to take her home. It could be this week, it could be a month. But at least he's traveling down there on the 24th to see her and everything. He's a sergeant in the Army. He serves our country well. He's a very top Black Hawk mechanic. But that's a lot of stress on him. He just lost his, his, his wife just left him. Been over in a military runoff with another guy, and now his mother's passing. Just lost his grandma, uh, grandpa, two years ago. So, y'all keep him in prayer. Keep that whole family in prayer. She does know the Lord. She knows she's getting ready to go home. Her mind's already gone. It's just a matter of time. They, they wanted her to leave her in the hospital, and <coughs> not give her nothing. And my stepson said, "No, I'm taking my mom home." Y'all not going to start her. She's going to go. She's going to go at home. So please remember that family. And remember me because we got to be friends that the devil stole from us. So we got to be good friends and everything. So, and I got to witness to her about the Lord. She does know God and lives in her heart. So y'all please keep them in prayer. Okay. Wayne, uh, myself, friends and family, uh, <coughs> unspoken and shut-ins and shut-outs, and uh, also for my wife, next Friday she's having a procedure done <coughs> to remove a pump and uh, put one back in, but be in prayer about that. Okay. Others, prayer request? Prayer request out here, anybody? Something you want to mention? Over here, Michelle? Family and friends. Okay. Other prayer requests? Anybody else tonight? How many with uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? God sees those hands. As we stand tonight, if any of you like to come up and be anointed, we certainly believe in that. And if not, you can take hands. If you got somebody beside you, if not, just take hands with the Lord. Praise God. Let's agree in prayer here tonight. Lord, first of all, as we come to you tonight, we just want to thank, take the time to thank you, Lord. Not just because Thanksgiving's coming up, but because every day is a day that we need to give you thanks, Lord. You said with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto you, and your peace would guard our hearts and minds. God, we all need that, each and every one of us, Lord. And God, we just pray to, tonight, Lord, that you'd receive our thanks. Uh, Lord, for allowing us to be able to stand tonight, to be able to move, to be able to get out of our houses and even go to a church building tonight. We thank you, God, for just uh, loving us so much, Lord, that, God, you give us eternal life, Lord, as David was singing the song, Jesus loves us. Yes, we know. God, let us remember that always, Lord. God, we do want to lift up prayer requests tonight, Lord. Father God, for people that are going through tragedies right now, for people that have got loved ones that have passed away, Lord, we... Pray for those that uh, Leon's talking about, one that's about to leave this old world. We pray for that family right now. And Lord, for his son and Father God, for all that situations there. Father God, we do pray, Lord, for uh, God, all the ones that are dealing with knees. I know people have had knee procedures and some still need knee procedures. And Lord, we pray for Laverne and David here both and others, Lord. For people that are dealing with COVID right now, as that ugly thing stuck its head up again, Lord, we just... Pray, God, that you'd be with all those that are dealing with that, and that the healing power of Jesus Christ would come up over their bodies, Lord. And God, they would receive healing. Uh, we do pray for Judy Hall tonight, Lord. Her and Bob Goforth still in the hospital. Also for Pam Wiggum, we lift these up in prayer in the hospitals for healing virtue, for your touch upon each and every one of them. Uh, we continue to pray for Gail and Charlie Bays and God, for both of them to totally be healed and miraculously for the glory of your kingdom. Uh, we continue to pray for Lakin that had her wisdom teeth pulled out this past Friday. Pray that you'll be with her, Father God, and just bring forth deliverance and pray that pain, suffering, hurt, whatever she's going through, Lord, that you'll just touch and move upon her, Father God. Pray for Bill Riley, Lord. I know he has a hard time getting up and around, sounds like, here lately, and we just want to Continue to pray for him, Father God, and, and Lord, also for ones that have had tests that good results have come back. We want to thank you for that. Pray that they stay that way, and, 
And again, Lord, for all those dealing with uh, cancer and COVID, and both of them, Lord, God, we want to pray for Wayne's wife that's having something done this Friday, that, God, you'll be with her. And uh, again, just a host of others, Father God, for all the ones that have been mentioned, for the hands that have went up tonight, for those that will be watching and listening, and hopefully at another time, for their needs as well, God, we lift them up to you in prayer. I pray for every person here tonight, for their families, for their loved ones. I pray, God, that your spirit of love and encouragement would just touch and move upon each and every one, Lord. Help us to see a lost and dying world saved for Christ. Help us to, to be light. Help us to be salt to a messed up world that needs Christ. And God, we just thank you. I pray for Brother Josh tonight. Just a young man, Lord, and I know his heart's out for you, Lord. I've seen this fella all his life, Lord, and I just thank you for him and his enthusiasm with you. And I just pray that, God, you're going to continue to bless him this night. Again, be with us all and uh, continue to anoint and touch our lives. Pray for America. Pray for this nation. Pray for our alliance with Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for all the things that are going on over there right now too. For your hands to be upon the hearts and lives of those that God you have called. And God, again, we just give all things in Jesus' name to you, Lord. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You want to do the offer? This will be a love offering tonight. Let's all go to Josh tonight. And this will be the only offering we're taking, by the way, too. So this is all for him. So. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bless our dear brother tonight, him and his family. And I pray as we give, we give uh, to the work of the Lord. We pray your blessings upon those that do and for those that have not to give as well. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm satisfied with Oh. 
call it paradise all it is somewhere beyond the sky so call it hell here's what I'm going to call it I call it hell that's what they're telling the world today someone they said gets a hold of you, you can't help what comes out your mouth. And you can't help when you end up halfway. Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we had a good time this morning. We talked about getting back to the basics. <laughs> How we need to get back to the truth. We need to get back to the Word of God. And we've become so complacent and so... Uh, comfortable in where we're at today that we've drifted far from what God's Word says and that we've drifted far from where we used to be. Like we said this morning, you know, when we first got saved, we had that passion and that desire to uh, come to God's house and to get in His presence and read His Word every day. And, but as we got comfortable, we just... Yeah. Always assumed that he would do it for us without putting in the work ourselves. By reading the word, by coming to church. You know, 
And uh, my parents can tell you, like I told you guys this morning, I'm, I always wanted to be the first one at church. I'd have the doors open and the lights on and everything ready to go, and I still do to this day. We start at 10 o'clock, and I'm at church at 730 every Sunday morning <laughs> getting ready. But tonight, we're going to kind of piggyback off of this morning. I mean, it's going to be similar. But uh, if you open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. I've always read this scripture, always known this scripture. We all know this scripture. But as I started actually studying it and reading through it more and more and more, the Lord showed me some things through here that just stuck out to me and I'm going to share them with you tonight. I know we all know Isaiah 43. Verse 1 says, But now thus says the Lord that created, o, that created thee, O God of Jacob, He that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia, Selah for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the end of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him and I have made him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time to be in your house tonight. God, we ask that you move through everything that is said. We ask you to continue to move tonight as you did this morning. Thank you. God, just let this uh, voice be a vessel for you tonight. Amen. Let everything be said. May we go home and share it with others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight I want to use for a topic called He Will Be There. He will be there. You know, we all go through things in our lives where unexpected happens. Um, might be a loss of a family member. Might be a death in the family, you know. Tragic incident that happened, somebody's sick, unexpectedly, you lose your home, you lose your job, might become paralyzed. There's all kinds of endless things that can happen unexpectedly. I, myself, unexpectedly did not see my wife having three miscarriages. <laughs> okay? But God was there with us the whole time. We had Shiloh with us this morning. And I know she was a wild thing. <laughs> but, hey, we've got another one on the way. The baby boy will be here in February. Amen. And as we talked about this morning, we talked about Moses, we talked about Joshua, we talked about Aaron. That's what we're going to name our son, Moses, Joshua, and Aaron. <coughs> But things happen that we cannot control. But He is there with us. We sang a song after the first, mis the, after the first miscarriage called um, Miracles. And, and it really struck me because I've never, you never really listen to words until you go through something. <laughs> and then we sang it that Sunday morning and then I just really, it really struck me because he really is a God of miracles. Yes. Sure, we just lost a child, but I knew God was still going to bless us with one eventually. Amen. So He is a God of miracles. Amen. But what I want to get to tonight is that He's going to be there with you no matter what. He walks with us. Amen. Mm -hmm. But as I said this morning, you cannot hold hands with God and the devil at the same time because you're going to fall on whichever side. That's right. 
But if we put our faith in God, then He will be there with us always. He's there right now. And as the sister saying this morning, He's in the midst of our storms. <coughs> so, what do we do tonight? And all those things, He's there with you. Here's some things that we should do. Number one, don't fear. He says in verse 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. He says to fear not. So why should I fear? Why should we fear? If He tells us in the Bible to fear not, why should we fear? What is fear? False evidence appearing real. So if something is false, why would we want to believe it? Amen? If fear is false evidence, why do we believe the lies of the enemy? And why are we afraid of what tomorrow holds? Yes. Why are we scared of what's to come? Or, or when we get that uh, bad report, why are we afraid? I could have easily, easily been in fear when we lost the first child and then the second one. And then when we lost Shiloh's twin, I could have lived in fear my whole entire life after that. But I didn't. Because he says to fear not. I knew. That it was false evidence appearing real. I ain't going to listen to the devil's lies. Come on. Come on. I know what God had promised us, and it happened. Amen. We got one beautiful little girl, and we got a baby boy on the way. Amen. Amen. So you can't tell me that God is not there with us. Come on. We can't fear. You know, we're so fearful of everything going on today, as we mentioned this morning. That we're losing focus of what God really wants us to do. We're so fearful of the world's uh, problems and all this wars and rages that's going on yeah. that we're not fearing God. Amen. We're so fearful of somebody's going to get us or they're coming after us, but we're not putting our faith in God. And that's what I talked about a little bit this morning, but He's there with us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to fret. He's right there all the time with us. Amen. And I believe this morning, or tonight, that God wants us to trust Him. Sure. You know, what does fear do? It turns into mind games. Then it starts turning into, well, this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and that's going to happen. And then eventually it does happen. Because you can think on something for so long and it really happens. Amen. I've done it. <laughs> I've been there. I was that kid that had to sleep with his light on until mom turned it off because I was scared of the dark. I had to go to, I had to, go to sleep with the light on. They can come in and turn it off, but I had to go to sleep. I don't know if y'all remember that or not. But I had fear of the dark. Why fear the darkness? If we have light, why fear the darkness? Because that light will outshine that darkness. Come on. Yes, it will. But you can't do mind games with the devil and worship God. That's right. And I think that's where we've been, that we have mind games with the devil, that we still try to worship God and then get nothing out of it because we're on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you either trust God or you don't. The Amplified of our text says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you, ransomed you by paying a price instead of leaving you captives. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Amen. <laughs> so we are His. Why would we fear? Mm -hmm. He said it right there that we are... His. Yes. You are mine, he said. First Timothy one or Second Timothy one seven in the Amplified Version says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well balanced mind and discipline and self control. Why did I choose that version? Because that part right there. A well-balanced mind. Mm -hmm. As we talked about this morning, you've got to have a heart that's pure. You can't have a heart that's divided. You can't have a mind that's divided either. Mm -hmm. that's right. 
You can't have a, a mind that worships God one day and then doing something else the next day that doesn't please God. Because eventually your thoughts will come out your mouth. So when you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you start cussing them out in your head, eventually it's going to come out. But you can't you can't have a double-minded life. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But he's given us a power of love and of a sound mind. God did not call us to fear. He did not give us that spirit. He gave us the spirit of love and power and sound mind to trust Him. Joshua 1 9 he says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's what I said this morning that we talked about that He's with us no matter what. How could we not want to be in the truth? How could we not want to be in His Word all the time? He's holding our hand right now as we stand here tonight. He's always with us. We go through things every day that we feel like that we're having problems here, we're having problems there, but He's right there holding your hand through the whole way guiding you through. He's there. And I believe that God will always be there. He will. He tells before... Always. He tells Paul and Joshua to be strong. Well, I messed up here. He tells us and Joshua to be strong and courageous and not fear. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Secondly, He's there through the waters and the rivers. It's like we talked about this morning that Moses, when he stretched forth that rod, mm -hmm. those waters parted. So they could walk through on dry ground. And the ones that came behind them after Moses had walked through, they drowned. Amen. So when you're going through waters and rivers, like we said this morning, when you're going through those waters and those rivers, and it seems like it's drowning you, God's going to stretch forth His hand to where you can come through on dry ground. You know, so many times we go through things that feels like it's drowning us daily. Yes. I know being in my job and my profession, being a team leader in my job, I feel like I'm drowning daily with the world. Because mm -hmm. you've got people that that know you're a minister, they know you're saved, they know you believe in the Bible, but they still act as if they don't respect that. Mm -hmm. They say things that are not right, you know, or they come at you in a different way that makes you feel like you're drowning and like, God, why can't I win against this? You know what I'm saying? Why can't I win against these spirits that are coming against us every day here at work? Or like when we felt like we were drowning after we lost that other baby, like at times you're thinking, God, I'm not fearing, but when will it happen? Or the story I used this morning, I'll share again tonight, that when we were on our honeymoon, we thought it would be cool to try to jump away while holding hands. Well, that does not work. Because eventually, it'll tumble you, it'll take you separate ways. I went that way, she went that way. That was a scary moment. <laughs> you talk about fear. <laughs> yeah. The water got you. But thank God we knew how to swim to where we didn't drown. And it brought us ashore because the ocean, you know, the waves brings you, yep. comes out. But that's like I try to tell you this morning that when you hold hands with God and you hold hands with the devil, you're eventually going to fall to one side. And when we were holding hands in that and that water came and hit us, that told me something. Not even, sometimes the strongest things can't keep you up. 
There's only one thing that can keep you on your feet, and that's Jesus. Amen. 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 You can hold on to this pew all day long and your knees give out, but Jesus is the only one that can keep you standing. Yeah. Amen. This can only keep you standing for a temporary time. But God will keep you standing through it all. Even when the water becomes about ankle deep, He'll keep you grounded. Even when the water becomes knee deep, He'll keep you grounded. But you've got to put your faith in Him. You've got to put your trust in Him. Now when the waters come and all that comes at you and it starts just hitting you and you feel like you're drowning and everything's going wrong, just trust Him. Because He'll stand there right there with you. He'll be right there in the water with you. And then He'll cast out that rod. Cast out His hand. And you'll be able to walk through on dry ground. And I believe tonight that that's what He wants us to do. Trust Him so much that we know He's there. I feel Him every day. I need Him in the car with me on my way to work because the way I take there's deer everywhere. Man, you don't know what's going to come out in front of you in dark time, night time. But if you put your faith in Him and you pray, I do believe God will keep them out of the road. Yes. And I pray it every morning, but I learned it from my father. There's another thing that He is there. He's there in the fires. You might have fires of oppression. You might have fires of opposition. You know, fire spreads easily. It can just start with just a small spark. And then before you know it, the whole building's caught on fire. Mm -hmm. yep. There's times in my life that, you know, you feel like you're burning in. It, it just starts overtaking you. I know with COVID, it was really bad. It felt like he was on fire. Just using the sickness as an example. But I know that God will get us through the fire. Yeah. Last night, my wife and I burned boxes, and she uh, got a little too close to the fire and burned her jacket. Mm -hmm. You don't get too close to the fire because it will burn you. Mm -hmm. But there's another fire that don't burn you. Come on. And that's the fire of God. And I think that we need the fire of God again in these last days. And, and as I told you this morning, you're praying for revival and you want to seek revival, but you need the fire of God to have revival. So we got our hearts pure, we got love, we've got our faith grounded in Christ. What about a fire? Come on. Amen. We don't have a fire like we used to. Amen. Man, we used to get so excited to come in God's house and we'd have so we'd be so fired up that we'd be, you know, singing every verse of every song with and sometimes we'd sing it about ten times because we could feel the presence of God in it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. There's a song that uh, that we do at church that uh, it's called Gratitude. It's a newer song. Most of you probably don't know. I don't. But there's one part in there that gets me every time. And don't go watch YouTube videos because you'll see me cry through it. Just kidding. <laughs> there's a part in that song that made me think about the fire that we've lost. Come on. <laughs> you know, we just got to give all our gratitude to Him. Yeah, man. But there's a part in that song that gets me every time. It says, come on my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. We just got to let it out. I think we've let our souls get shy. Because we've got a lion inside of our lungs that are ready to come out. And our fire shut up in our bones that needs to come out. Come on. Brother Ernie told me this morning I have permission to preach hellfire and brimstone, so I don't know. That's right. But we had that fire one time where we were so passionate about Jesus.
that we couldn't wait to get to his house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Going back to back to you were ready to get to Sunday school. You were ready to get to Sunday morning service. You were ready to get to Sunday night service. You were ready to get to Wednesday night. You were ready to get to every prayer service they had. Every men's meeting, every women's meeting, whatever it was. Now we're lucky if we show up one time on Sunday morning. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> yep. That's it. We need a fire back that spreads so yep. greatly that we start seeing God move in our churches again. That we start seeing healings yeah. once again. Fire that we start fire. seeing people saved once again. Yes. yes. There was a young man here this morning, I could tell, was ready to give his heart to Christ, but he just, he let it go. I wish he would came tonight. <laughs> he was ready. You could see, you could see the tears coming down his face. I pray that he will get that. But I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, that it will happen. Because God was dealing with him this morning. But there are some people I want to, there's three men I want to talk about tonight before we wrap this up. That was in a fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now when you think of a fire, they're going to come out, burn up. Come on, brother. Looking like ashes almost. Uh huh. But they weren't. Because when they got in the fire, there was three. Mm -hmm. But eventually there ended up being a fourth person in that fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need that fourth person yes, to get in our fire with us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we need that fourth person yeah. all the time. Not sometimes, all the time. Uh -huh. We need that fourth person to be in the fire with us. Amen. Amen. They were able to walk through that fire. They were able to dance through that fire. I can see them now in my spirit. They were probably shouting and praising God, because that's what the Bible says. But I can see them probably dancing around, running around, and I know I probably ran this aisle this morning, but I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. But that's just the fire of God. They had a passion that, that they knew that God would get them through. They were singing, they were praising God, they were shouting, yeah. and they came out not smelling like smoke, and they were not burned up. Why? Because they had Jesus there with them. Right. Amen. Son of God. I believe that that was a form of Jesus. He may not have <laughs> been here on earth then, but He was right there in the fire with them. Amen. And He'll be right there in the fire with you tonight. Amen. He'll be right there in the waters with you tonight. He'll be right there in your midst tonight. Of every storm that you go through, He'll be right there. And Bobby, He'll be right there through you. Through it all. There's a song, an old song, and I like to say, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Why? Because He's there with me. And that very same person, I believe, that wrote that said the blood will never lose its power. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Jesus. Because it reaches to the highest mountain. There's another old song, because we've got to remember this, that He is there with us. Mm -hmm. And that He is Lord. There's an old song we used to sing all the time called He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. And here's everything that I'm going to say right now that comes in this song that gets me every time. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's coming a day that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether they make it to heaven or not, they still have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Tonight, I know I didn't preach long because I preached an hour and a half this morning. I didn't preach that long. He's there when you need Him. We need to understand that. 
He's always there. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. We don't need to fear him every day. All we need to do is just walk with him. He's holding our hand. Aren't you glad that He's in the fire with us tonight? Yes. Aren't you glad that He's holding our hand and guiding us through? Just take a moment real quick before we get any further. Keep playing. I do like that. Can't you see just Him walking with you? Just hold your hand. As you walk every day, just picture Him holding your hand. Getting you up every morning. Just being right beside you. He's there with you. So tonight, if you're here, you need prayer, don't be afraid to come to these altars. You just might need reassurance that He's there with you. If you're here tonight and you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity. Or if you're here and you haven't, or if you fell away from Jesus and you feel like you need to give your life back to God, I want to give you that opportunity tonight as well. So let's just take a moment and just worship as they sing. Minister to our hearts tonight. Help us all to just 
be more of what you want us to be and less of what this world tries to get us to be. And I pray your hands upon our hearts and our minds. And uh, Father, bring us back together when the opportunity comes. And we ask your love and your encouragement upon each and every one. And again, until we get to be together, once again, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Again, remember Wednesday night is our church service. And again, remember uh, the services with the funerals and stuff coming up also. Have a good evening and God bless.